The panel is called Departure to New Shores, the Future of Package Tourism. So package tourism so far was always the most secure form of travel. Your, your, your money is being dis, um, guaranteed. Everything is organized from one point of contact and customers can receive your money back. But you see that things are not as easy as they used to be. Not all the customers have a received refunds and reimbursements of their money. Some are still waiting. And this is what we are talking about. So I have with me De La Freur, who is the head of sales with Schauenslands. Then we have got Eva Zemberi from the Spanish um, uh, Tourist uh, Association Berlin, Tourist España. And, and then we have got Uta Martins from Amadeus. And we have Michael Schröer, Senior Manager direct sales from Sun Express. I would like to present our panelists, Diet Lefreur, who knows the side of the travel agent as, as well as the tour operator. He has been working in the fields and he, since 2020, he is also a member of the management of HSV, the uh, um, travel group. So his statement is that Corona leads to individualization of package tours and it changes the portfolio of the tour operators. Now this brings me to Eva Samperi. I would like to welcome you from um, the Spanish uh, Tourism Association based in Berlin, Tour España. She has studied tourism and she has worked with many uh, hotels and she's also worked for uh, Corte Inglés and uh, she's been working for Tour España for a number of years and also in uh, market research. She said economic markets co currently keep changing and but after the corona crisis we'll be seeing increased tourism then. And I would like to welcome Sandra Castro who has 20 years of experience in sales and she did her uh, diploma in tourism and since 2018 she is in charge of products for content providers. She says and travelers love the services of tour operators before, during, and after their journeys, and that is what makes the difference for them. Hello, Ms. Castro. And last but not least, I would like to welcome Michael Schuber. He knows both sides. He knows the side of the airline as well as and travel agents. He did his apprenticeship in uh, travel, and he worked for many airlines in 2010. Then he started working with Lufthansa City, Sten Set City Center. And this year for him it was back to the route since um, the 1st of March. He works um, for Sun Express Senior Manager Direct Sales. So Mr. Schuber says that um, people call say that package tours are dead, but they are not. There will be a renaissance. Thanks for being with us today. I would like to start with a pro rather provocative question to the background as what Corona crisis has meant for package tourism. So in some po points, the customers haven't received and their council entrance fees or um, their reimbursement fees. So my question is, can we still save package tourism? And I would like to ask the question to Mr. Schuber because he says there will be a renaissance in package tourism. Why? Well, if we look at the last few years, I remember when I did my apprenticeship and there were uh, only, you could only book either one week or two weeks. Then at some point people said, well, we need to make this more flexible or uh, 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 package shows won't survive this, so things became more and more flexible. Also, the, the pricing became more flexible, and I believe that package tours will survive this crisis. There are some premises which we need to live up to, as we heard before. And so customers and uh, demands should be taken more into account. 
so they want mm, to be able to rebook things, uh, they need more flexibility, and if all of this is implemented, there will be a new normal, something which uh, will be totally different from what it looked like before cry, uh, Corona. So Corona will lead to loads of changes, and we as an airline need to adapt to these changes. So we won't just put contingencies onto the market and just say, well, either you buy it or not. No. We are in contact with our tour operators. We talk about how we can flexibilize the whole situation. And we are quite hopeful for 2021. Okay, I see. You mentioned the topic of flexibility. Here, I would like to pass on the floor to Mr. Schröer. Offensichtlich diese no, Flexibilität bei vielen Anbietern so, auch nach vorne gestellt wird. Es gibt Holiday so Check. Holiday, Holiday, Holiday Check, Check Travels, for example, they have got a totally new flexible uh, product. So you can cancel uh, without having to pay anything. You don't even have to make a down payment. Mr. Schröer, is this something which you see as a possibility for Schauensland? And with offering more flexible products? Well, the topic of flexibility will remain a big one, whether it will, things will look the way as you just depicted them. I don't know yet. Certainly, as Michael Schober just said, we will jointly have to look into what will be possible, how we can live up to certain desires and wishes of our customers, and everything also, I mean, there always needs to be a business case for what we do. And uh, we are currently only selling things in a single portal. So things certainly will change, yes, and flexibility is a very important thing. We will need to offer flexibility. Now, in the context of how long journeys take, these things have been sold, uh, solved already, so there is a lot of um, flexibility already. And so maybe with I mean, in travels and in, in individual trips, um, there will be we will need more flexibility. So people will prefer small flats or holiday homes to big hotels. Things will have to change. Uh, we don't have a crystal ball, but. One, so I don't agree with you, Ms. Wilkins. I believe that um, package tours will certainly survive despite the difficult times. Well, thanks a lot for the statement. Ms. Castro, you believe that travelers love the service before, during, and after their journey. And how do you deal with this? aspiration from the customer side from a technical perspective. Yes, we've just heard this before. So what is very important for package tours, uh, which are nothing else but a full service package. So we just learned so much from the surveys in the last panel. People feel insecure before their journey. So we need to inform them what will their journey be like from the moment they arrive at the airport and the destination uh, until what's going to happen in and their point of destination. And we believe that we can offer this kind of information in order to make people feel less insecure. What can we do as Amadeus? Well, that's our mission, to just look into that, offering this information which and the tour operator offers and putting them into the distribution system. So gi let's give you an example. So hygienic measures, rules and regulations, and all of this is very important. The travelers want to know that. So we have introduced a so-called hotel attribute. And so when you do a search on Bistro Portal, uh, the final customers, but also the tour operators, can search for um, for hotels which offer or have introduced hygiene measures, so disinfectants, uh, check-in without contact, uh, so people can select these things in their search. 
and search for hotels which offer that. Thanks a lot. Now I would like to ask Ms. Samperi. So what's your perspective on the future of package tours? Because Spain is a typical package tour country. Yes, I agree with Mr. Schober. We believe that package tours will be seeing a revival. And over the last week, we have seen um, that, uh, or last weeks, we have seen that our customers perceive package tours as a safe way of traveling. So those protocols who have been introduced in summer have proven to be the right protocols. They have given our customers their trust back. We only got positive feedback from our customers, and they felt secure on the ground. They have been able to endure, enjoy their journeys and their holidays. And I believe that this is a product which is really helpful. So package tours will, will be seeing a revival either after Corona or even before over the next few months. Thanks a lot, Ms. Samperi. I would like to add one more question. Yesterday, we received the news from Tour de España that there is a protocol for secure travel corridors. Can you explain that? Because that is of a special importance for the Canary Islands. Because here, the main season is winter. Yes. Those protocols have been put together by the central government of Spain, together with the governments of the Canary and Balearic Islands, and, and they will be put at the disposal of uh, international governments in order to continue to develop them together with international governments. So they are based on the strategy of tests before travel, so as soon uh, people are being tested in the source market as well as in their destination. And here we can guarantee the health of everybody in the whole travel chain, so and the tourists, but also service personnel, and that they can just fly back into their everyday life without quarantine. Well, thanks a lot. Now I've got a question from the audience, which is a question to Mr. Schober. Please describe the share of individual um, of, of of your customers who do pa who book package tours and who uh, book journeys individually before and after Corona. Well, I can say that our market is broken down into three pieces. So we have got classical package tours where we cooperate with tour operators, and then we sell uh, touristic, um, touristic destinations such as um, Balaman or uh, Antalya, and then we also offer long distance travel, but also for Turkish um, with, with people from Turkish families who want to visit their families at home in Turkey. And so I think there won't be too much of a difference to 2019. Certainly, we will be seeing more touristic destinations booked via tour operators. I can't break it down into real figures, but maybe at the end of the day, we'll end up with a 50-50. Thanks a lot. There's another question from the audience. Um, we receive so many questions here. So this is a question to Ms. Castro. The question is, Germany is being discovered as a package tour destination due to Corona. So can you offer that? Uh, uh, can, can you live up to the aspirations of people as a technical provider? Well, we reflect what tour operators offer to us. So Mr. Scher just mentioned this. Many tour operators are currently discovering a new, let's say, apartment content, regional content. 
Others have always done this, and now they become quite strong, especially in the German, Swiss, uh, Austrian market. But we take these new offerings into our system, and we put it into our distribution system. Something else which we have done, we have got a partnership with a provider for holiday homes, for holiday home applications. And that we have just newly integrated them into our search so that travel agents and advisors can even do a better job with a beautiful search criteria, a lot of information on the objects on the ground, which live up to these trends for increased demand. Next question is about package tours and the flexibility which we talked about before. So this is a question to Mr. Schröer. So how can we become even more flexible and do online OTAs and due to uh, their technical advantages? Um, will, will they benefit in the long run? So this was, so they have got a big uh, the, the headway uh, as compared to brick and mortar travel agencies. So how can the whole sector become more flexible? Well, one advantage, well, I, 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 I don't think that OTEs have got a general advantage over a brick and mortar travel agents. So at the end of the day, we are offering all of them the same data. Now, if you try to compare package tours to individually put together tours, these are two different things. I think the concept of um, package tours has changed over the years. I mean, we are highly flexible in offering flexible uh, in, in, in package tours. We are offering all different kinds of package tours. So I, as a customer, can very flexibly design my journey. And uh, so private transfer instead of uh, uh, using a coach, uh, uh, offering transfer with a taxi or with an individual driver. So we will focus more on those things. So the model in itself is already quite flexible. It is offering maximum, a maximum of flexibility. And, and this also brings us back to what some of the speakers said in the previous presentation, which is our customers have got an increased need for information. They want to have a point of contact before their journey, during the journey. They feel more need for security during their journey and before that. And this is what a package tour can offer. I mean, a package tour can be a journey which is put together with different building blocks according to the individual needs of um, the traveler, plus guaranteeing additional security. So I believe that package tours really have got a great future. And this topic of online, offline really doesn't fit into this discussion. That's my personal perspective, at least. I see. Thanks a lot. Now this morning in the first panel, we already got all these interesting market insights from the market research. There's another question to Mr. Schröer. Uh, so the booking criteria have changed. There seems to be a high need for individualization. So how do you deal with that in your portfolio? So people don't want to be accommodated with many other people. They try to avoid, they want to avoid to infect themselves. So how do you create the preconditions for this? Well, I think we've heard this um, from Ms. Samperi before. In the destination areas, uh, and there needs to be a guarantee that everything will be safe. And we can only do this to, to get, do this together with the hotels, with um, uh, the airlines, with all the service 
uh, providers on the ground, we need to communicate with them. And this also includes travel agents. And I believe that this was also mentioned in a quite good way in the previous session. We see a certain path on the one hand towards smaller units, smaller hotels, uh, apartment uh, apartments where people cater for themselves. So this is something which we massively expand in order to live up to people's needs. Uh, as mentioned before, we are also expanding other fields, such as private transfers, in order to cater to these needs, which uh, we quite understand, uh, this need of meeting fewer people, encountering fewer people. And then we are seeing a different, another trend. And the and hotels which manage to create a certain level of trust, which also have got good hygiene protocols, and that and they really enjoy a high level of trust of distribution, but also of the customers. And these things will um, be will still remain in the future. So if somebody has gained this high level of trust now during Corona, they will retain it in the future. So we must not play with the trust our customers give us. We need to be very, um, we need to ensure that we behave rightly. We always have to try to uh, really reflect um, that we as a total sector are behaving responsibly. We have got another question from um, the audience to uh, Ms. Samperi. This is about the Canary Islands. How optimistic are you that the Canary Islands will manage to at least re retain or keep a certain part of their business? Well, first of all, the infection figures on the Canary Islands are lower, and therefore we uh, are hoping for a lifting of the travel advisory or warning. And shouldn't there be a lifting? And uh, on the other hand, if the infection figures are higher, uh, what we we elaborate something in the protocols, and we are going to implement it. And with that, we hope that the existing bookings for uh, Christmas in winter uh, won't be cancelled, that there won't be a wave of cancellations or rebookings, and uh, that we have a third of uh, the previous year. That would be nice. Thanks, uh, Ms. Samperi. The basis of the protocol is a test strategy 48 hours before uh, entering the Canary Islands and afterwards the, um, there is a test strategy in Turkey. Would you like to talk about the experience of the last weeks and months, Mr. Shaw? I cannot uh, talk about um, direct experience. We had larger information trips with travel agency employees in order to familiarize them with the hygiene measures in Turkey. And they were quite thrilled how, you know, at the beginning at the airport, how everything took place and at the hotels, they took precautionary measures. There is a certificate, safe tourism in Turkey. And I honestly have to say that uh, it was quickly planned and implemented and consistently you felt safe. And it's important and maybe I can add this and it really uh, worried us the uh, statements of governments which did not really allow us to plan. This is true for travel agencies and uh, tourist offices. But since 8th of November, there is a decision that you make a difference between a risk area and non-risk area. And Turkey 
as such is uh, considered a risk area, but the region Antalya Mulia and Ismib is not. And we have clear statements that a test needs to be taken at least 48 hours before traveling back. And that's enough. And then you don't need to do into quarantine in Germany anymore. And this is part of the hygiene measures in Turkey, in the region of Antalya, for example. That's something like that is possible. Thanks a lot, Mr. Schober. The next question is about the price level. I'd like to address this issue here in the debate. Due to the crisis, and there are fears for a strong price battle. And the question from the audience, how should the price level of package tours evolve? That's an open question to everyone here. Maybe I can start. Uh, Sun Express is part of package tours, you know. Beforehand, we said price beats fear. The cheaper a uh, trip is, at one point in time, the customer will say, we are going on vacation, the price performance ratio is uh, okay. I think at the moment there's not a high sensibility, sensibility regarding prices. I think you cannot convince anyone nowadays uh, to travel to the Canary Islands or to Antalya for 50 euro. I think the person is willing to pay 100 euro if all the prerequisites are there, if safety is assured, if there's enough flexibility, if I know I can rebook, I can go to the travel agency or the to the tour operator. I think that's really important, um, that there will be a price uh, battle for prices. I don't know. Uh, I couldn't uh, agree here. Yeah, I agree with what my previous uh, speaker said here. Um, if we have a discussion on what's going to happen within the next two to three months, it's one thing. But the question is, how should the price evolve? In, the hotels, let's say. in hotels, they do a lot regarding hygiene concepts. The airlines, the carriers uh, provide a lot of service. We are a sector with not a huge margin. Maybe that's a problem. And therefore, I think we really should... Uh, move forward the value of traveling. I'm not a fan of making everything cheaper. You know, this mentality, if a bargain is the greatest thing ever. And when it comes to package tours and when we offer this at a travel agency, then we can say we make a difference because of offering quality. And then we should have the self-confidence that this kind of holiday has a certain value and to time and again say, okay, here you get five euro off and you get a voucher. I think that's not really getting us to uh, the goal. And tourist um, companies need to earn money. That should be the case over the long run, right? Otherwise, uh, there uh, are other things looming at the rising horizon and to push down the price level and Egal, was es denn wirklich kostet, ist sicherlich nicht der no matter what the real price is, uh, isn't the right way forward. And in the long run, it wouldn't be good for the sector. At the beginning, surely. If uh, there's an increased travel activity, then there may be one or the other uh, price reduction. And we say, okay, we open up, we have to reach a certain level. And there may be special offers. And maybe airlines will do the same thing and tour operators as well. But in the medium and long run, it would be desirable, and maybe I'm a bit naive here, but it would be really desirable to have okay prices at the markets. You know, you need to have prices uh, associated with reliability. And if you have cheap prices, you can't really be reliable. I don't think it works. 
Thanks to Mr. Schreiber. And there's another question from the audience for you, Mr. Schreiber. What is your stance on the short-term shift to package to us without the airline element um, for 2021? Here, say the airline sector will suffer. What's the perspective from Schau Insland? If Uh, airlines will suffer in the long run, we will see, but for 2021 and 22 is that we see uh, an increased demand for uh, markets like Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And um, of course it's difficult, but we extend our portfolio wherever possible, even on use you find different offers also from us and this may be true for other market participants wherever there is a need uh, from customers and demand from customers we try to respond it won't be uh, it won't happen as quickly as possible or it won't happen so quickly but if there's a demand from the customer then we try to respond quickly Thanks a lot. Then a question to Ms. Castro. Basically, each day we hear that what was applicable yesterday uh, is outdated. The next day there's one risk area and there's a travel advisory for one risk area. It's really hard to keep pace. Um, how do you do it on with Amadeus? Yeah, it's true. Mm. One insight from the current situation is that we quickly have to adapt to changing conditions and integrate it into the systems. This is true for information that we have to upload into our info centers. But what's also true is that we have to be quite flexible and offer new things in our systems. These are prepared by tour operators and new conditions um, that should be included in those offers. So we are addressing it at the moment already. It, and to us, or for us it means it, we need to provide information for the different data. We have to adapt our formats and uh, offers Um, at the point of sale um, should be found and um, you need to be able to search for those offers and we are in dialogue with the tour operators we are in exchange of information with those and we ensure that um, it is implemented in a digital level so it can be used by sales thanks to Ms. Castro one question to Ms. Sam Perry also getting back to the initial statement on um, sustainability for example um, Spain especially the Balearic Airlines try to establish themselves as a sustainable destination what is the situation at the moment What opportunities do you see to establish um, itself as a sustainable destination, Ms. Semperi? And then I have a question from the audience, which is quite similar, which goes in that direction. Do you think that the customers after the pandemic um, have higher uh, expectations when it comes to the impact of package tours? Yeah, before Corona, the debate rather was about mass tourism and Corona has shown the necessity of a sustainable model. It um, raised awareness amongst all of us. And there are a few companies in Spain on the side of the offers which see sustainability as a primordial goal, like Eurostar, and it can be expected that other companies will follow suit. And the uh, internal mobility, uh, which was re-established after lockdown, has showed us that tourists also interest in other things. The so-called empty Spain suddenly saw a big rise in tourists. Um, they are interested in slow tourism or in camper holidays and 
the same thing is what Germans experienced in domestic tourism and discover it for them. And we expect that this trend will continue after Corona. And this would lead to the fact that in high season, some areas will be relieved of the burden and other areas uh, would be reinvigorated. And that's also a wish, a goal and that we advocated before Corona. It's the seasonal um, that we have a more sustainable model that not some areas are packed and the others are not. And at the moment, uh, the primary thing for the customer is to be able to do vacations, but also at a so social and sustainable level, um, that's quite present amongst customers. And after Corona, I think this will be really important for Spain. Great. Thanks a lot. There's a last question dealing around the topic of travel advisories or travel warnings. It's quite recent development that despite being uh, stated as a risk area, uh, you can fly to those areas. TUI, for example, is flying to the Canary Islands. And the question to Mr. Schreuer, oh, what is your stance on it? Schauensland, will it uh, get away from its current practice and offer travels to risk areas? Well, these are developments that we have a close look at. And of course, we see great changes when it comes to politics. If we look at uh, two years ago, then travel advisory meant travel advisory. And then we have politicians who relativize it. And maybe my personal opinion about it is that it's not always the best thing to put in those kind of words. And the question is, what do you want to achieve with that? If a huge number of travelers still flies to a risk area despite of a travel advisory, um, well, that's one thing. We haven't done it so far uh, for good reasons. I'm a big fan to also think in the long run. If we say that's, that the trust of customers is the most important thing, then we should really take seriously the framework conditions set up by the state. And only if you have good reasons then maybe uh, you don't completely implement the travel advisories. I'm skeptical, uh, personally, if that's a good uh, way forward. I do understand the reasons. But as of today, there's still a certain kind of skepticism. Is If this is the right way forward, we haven't done travels to risk areas yet. And the question is, if you offer it for certain destinations, then why not for others? How can I explain it to the customer then? And does it have an economic impact? Will the airline carers be fully booked? I don't think so. Maybe it's a bit uh, a principle of hope. But I don't want to make a final judgment here. I am part of the sector who made a different um, decision, and there are others in the sector. And But maybe I am told and too conservative to welcome everything that happens. <laughs> okay, Mr. Schreer, I think age should never play a role, should it? <laughs> I don't mean it in a political sense, yeah. I think this topic of reliability is dramatically important and everything in, that could put it into question. Uh, I really consider this uh, a lot and, and trust is so important and I always keep this in mind, trust, trust, trust. You want to have good business, but with trust. Yeah, the keyword trust 
uh, flexibilization, flexible products to respond more flexible to customers regarding new challenges and individualization are important keywords that we take back home from this panel. Thanks a lot to Ms. Samperi, Ms. Castro, thanks to Mr. Schröer and Mr. Schober for this intense participation in our panel.